Hello everyone, it is Liam the Deaf2 Metalhead here and today I'm talking about artwork. So I was recently inspired by a lot of people's videos, but mainly Andy Cloudy Marder's video on his favourite 10 album covers that isn't an Iron Maiden album. Now, I thought about doing a response to that, but I wanted to do something different because this kind of video I've been wanting to do for a long, long time and I've never got round to it. But you can check out his video above my head if you're interested. But this is all about the artists, so not the artwork essentially, well it is, but not the bands. So what I've done here is I've done my 10 favourite heavy metal artists, which vary across certain styles of metal, but mostly death metal because that's the shit I'm into. So the 10 artists here, you'll get through this and hopefully you'll learn a bit more about the covers you might have in your collection. Because this is all from my collection and I'll try and edit in pictures of the artists and stuff like that. So the first band, not even the first band, the first artist is a chap called Adam Burke from Portland, Oregon. And his artwork is kind of like a painting style where it's like lots of bright colours, a lot of fantasy, it's dark looking, evil. And I pulled out my two favourites from my collection. The first one is from the band Coffin Mulch with Septic Funeral. This is an amazing cover. You know, this is a, what this video is mostly about is blind buys, really. And the cover kind of makes you buy the album. Like, you don't have a clue what it sounds like. And this was, you know, one of them. I had no idea what this band sounded like when I bought it. Pre ordered it just purely based off that cover. It's death metal. They're a Scottish band. Fuck yeah. You know, I mean, you've got this fucking dead looking monk. Stabbing himself, his guts are coming out here. There's green smog fumes. The that, you know, the EP is called Septic Funeral. It has everything I want in an album cover. You know, I happily have this plastered all over my room, and I do have the poster up there. You know, and I wish I brought the flag now that they did with this cover artwork because it's fucking amazing. But then I thought about it, and in my collection I also have another one of his, and that is Solifus's um, Realm of Ash and Blood. If you can see, the style is very similar. But with this one here, he's gone for more of a Conan the Barbarian with the Grim Reaper, and then an Undead Army here. It just looks incredible. I mean, I already knew this band, so it was a, you know, a given. But when it has artwork this strong, it just makes it even more easier to buy. So yeah, first one on my top 10 of artists is Adam Burke. Next on my list is one that everybody knows, and it's an artist that can do no wrong. He's a self-taught guy from the UK but now lives in Canada and you probably know who it is already but it is the man, the legend that is Dan Seagrave and he's done some incredible artwork. His is more of a landscape style where it's all based off like a fantasy element with like a Pacific like landmark and the art all around it is just fucking awesome and I picked out some great ones here. This is the um, American Banjo Bulba. I mean you study the artwork here you've got an Aztecian temples which is a theme in their album artwork but what's really cool is you've got some kind of massive futuristic battle going on with these tanks and stuff like that and it's just incredible absolutely love his work and you know most of them have a theme we'll pick out some more here they've got tons to show another one that lured me into this band Memorium before I even knew it had uh, Carl Willits on vocals and it was like a bolt for a link with Andy Whale and if you kind of move this, I think this is a gatefold, yeah. You can see the landscape thing there, again with tanks. Because obviously it's got the war theme in there. And there's the landmark, like I say, in most of his work. But yeah, like the funeral march there with the undead. Absolutely incredible. And then you've got ones like Paganizer's latest. Well, I don't know how many they've done now, they've got a bazillion albums. But this one from 2019 with the stupid shiny cover that kind of ruins the artwork for me. But what you can see, if I can get the light right, is you've got the, again, landmark there. It's just incredible, you know, and then on the back there's some more of his artwork there. Really, really cool. And then lastly, another favourite of mine, Turkish band, Burial Invocation. Again, you've got the landmark. And it's just the colours he uses and the textures, it, it just really does pop. I think he's on the back as well there. As well. It's just incredible, really, really good work. And there's a bit of more of an up-close look at the front cover in the gatefold. But yeah, with Seagrave's work, you just when you see it, it's the colours and the textures he uses, it just pops all the time. And like, yeah, a lot of his other album covers, you know, they look very similar. He's known for all the classic death metal albums. And there's a good reason, you know, blind buying album covers is really easy when it's a Dan Seagrave because you're going to like it. So yeah, Dan Seagrave. Next on my list is one you might have not heard of. This is a Swedish chap, but he's also quite well known 
in the underground metal movement. His name is Matthias Frisk. He's also the singer and guitar player in the band Vang Held, which is like a Swedish death doom band, which I do appear above your head there. Um, his techniques are really cool. So he does a lot of different like oil canvas kind of styles, and he mixes it up with pen and paper, collage, digital photos. You know, he's a bit more varied in his style. And two of these ones are kind of different that I've picked out. First one is the band Corpsest. I fucking love this cover. I mean, it is again another one I blindly bought. It's Finnish death metal. Check. I love Finnish death metal. It's got a sick album cover. Check. So instant buy. I mean, it's a weird one. It's just like some weird four-legged giant with oars sticking out of it and some sails up there. But it's just awesome. I absolutely love it. Really, really, really cool. Love that. And then this one, slightly different, but this is a themed album. This is the band Throne of Heresy with their album uh, Decameron. And this is all based off the Black Death. And his painting he did for that, or drawing, per se, is that where they're carrying the body out wrapped. Really, really, really cool. Mateus, is a, you say he's unknown, but you've actually probably seen his work. He's actually done quite a lot of work for the band Ghost. And I'll find some artwork to pick on this video of what he's done. But yeah, really, really cool artist, especially that Corpse S one. I absolutely love that. It's like one of my favourites. So yeah, Mateus Frisk. Next one is a German artist by the name of Chris Kiesling, but he also uses the name Misanthropic Art. Now his artwork is very varied and there's loads of bands that you can check out of his work. But the couple I've picked out here are some quite popular albums that you might not know he'd done. This is the band Fulci with their Tropical Sun album. Very, very popular album in the last couple of years of the death metal movement being massive during COVID. This came out just before COVID. It's a massively popular album and it is a really strong album. But he did the cover art and it's just fucking awesome. Obviously based off the film Zombie 2 and the name Fulci, obviously the director, it's an Italian death metal band. Just a really, really cool cover. And again, another one that I kind of blindly bought based off this cover. I knew the band was popular uh, when I picked this up. I think it was 20, just before 2020 or 20, it must have been 2020 when I picked this up. Amazing album, I think this came out in 2019. But yeah, really, really cool art. And another one, again, blindly bought based off his work because it is fantastic. And that is the band Necrovolt. I mean, that cover is fucking awesome. I love that. If you can see there. Like tower and his zombies kind of marching towards it. Really dark, really horrible, and it fits the music perfectly. Some more cool artwork on the back there. But his artwork is very really dark, as you probably gathered already. But I, and I've also got something by him, but Stonk is set, if you can see that, by the band uh, is that Pain Giver. Yeah. Really, really cool. Some monks and some undead spirits of some kind coming out of that fire. Yeah, really, really cool. So if you haven't checked that one out, go check it out, Misanthropic Art. Now next one I'm a massive fan of, and most people are as well, massively influential in the underground death metal scene. And anything he puts pen to paper is an instant hit for me. No matter what the music sounds like, I ain't got a clue. I will check it out purely because of his name and the artwork he does. And that is Mark Riddick. Obviously, is hundreds of covers he's done, but I went with one of my favourites, Eternal Rock. I love this band, and the only reason I ever checked out Eternal Rock was purely based off Mark Riddick's artwork on the very first album they did. Since then, you know, I absolutely adore this band, an amazing band. But his artwork is what lured me in, and that's the beauty of really good art and heavy metal covers. If they can lure you in, you can then become a fan of a band you've never even heard of. And he's done all their albums to date, actually. I think he's done. Bar for the seven inch, he's done everything they've ever put out. Artwork's killer. I mean, he's really well known for his borders as well. He does these really sick borders. Like, there's this Noxus 10 inch here I have. The actual cover art I didn't do, but the border in the inlay is a Mark Riddick border. I mean, you just see the detail he does is insane. And he's also done stuff you wouldn't expect him to do, like Black Metal Band Holder. He did the kind of banner here. For her latest release with these kind of zombie night things there I don't know if that will focus enough to really do it justice but that was really cool to find out he'd done that but he also does music he's not just an artist he is a chap that's done his own band which is a fetid zombie this is a split is a, all of the ones I've got on cassette are splits but this is one I believe he's done this cover here 
and it's always black and white, really cool. But he's not just, you know, death metal. I mean, Mark has been around since probably 91, doing his own art, and he's even done work for Justin Bieber and Rihanna. So if you see some sick fucking skull art for Justin Bieber or Rihanna, that's probably him. I don't know if he's probably done that or not, but that was quite cool to read up that he's kind of branched out and really expanded his empire, shall we say. So yeah, Mark Riddick, absolute legend. Right. This next one is probably the only artist in this collection that would legitimately beat the shit out of you. Now, this is Pablo Gerardi, an Italian oil painter who does the best death metal album covers you never even knew you loved. I mean, his work is insane. It's oil, oil based paintings, and they just look incredible. Like, you could have these in a museum easily, they're that cool. First saw his artwork through the band Firespawn. All three of their albums are done by him, but I picked this one out because it's the brightest, so you can actually see it as clear. I mean, it's just incredible, the detail. And if you look on his like social pages, which I'll link below for everything, you can see the detail he puts into his covers is insane. You can study them for absolutely ages. You can always pick out little things that you didn't even notice before. But yeah, Firespawn, which is LG Petrov, it's last uh, known project, I believe. And then there's like American Funeral Doom as Lycus, this magnificent looking cover there, which kind of depicts Funeral Doom at its finest. It's dreary, horrible, and you know, it's got this weird looking landscape, but slightly different. You know, it's an oil based painting, obviously, but it's not got loads of zombies or anything like that on it. It's just a really cool landscape picture. I really, really like that. And then he's responsible for one of my favourite albums in the Death Doom genre, should we say? Temple of Voids, uh, Lords of Death. I mean, that cover is fucking awesome. I absolutely adore this cover. Again, like a battlefield scene with some horses, a castle, like, this is like bat creatures flying in, attacking. It's just amazing. The amount of detail he does in his covers is insane. And the last one I've got of him, there's so many I could show you, but the new one from Sulphurus, Danish death metal, again, just incredible. You've got this kind of weird wormhole like creature here and some kind of undead looking guys around the border but yeah, just fucking awesome artwork that's the only way I can describe him if you see a picture of him, he looks absolutely mental as an artist but his skill involved is insane really, really cool you know, there's so many good album covers he's done you know, absolutely adore his work so yeah, Pablo Garadi, amazing now the next one is a Spanish artist that's probably the best doing undead skeletons that look really realistic and look amazing. I'll try and pronounce his name, but I'm probably going to butcher it. His name is Juanjo Castellano, and his artwork, as soon as you see it, is instantly recognizable. It's amazing. Now, I first saw it on the first, or is this the second? This is the second Solifus album, so this is the second featured in this, but different artwork this time, different artists. That cover was the only reason I got into this band in the first place. Saw this and thought, fuck yeah, I'm all in, you know. Absolutely love it. Like, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, and it reminded me of that scene where he's like, really messed up. Um, because he's under that curse, I can't remember his name, but yeah, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, he's got the little person in the corner whispering into him all the evil deeds. And I absolutely love it, you know. And the album's called No King Reigns Eternal, and it just depicts that perfectly. Absolutely love that cover. But it gets better, like, Again, this is a 10 out of 10 album cover that I absolutely adore. Like, if anyone says to me, like, what's your favourite album cover ever? Like, this is easily in my top five. And that is Revel in Flesh's um, The Hour of the Avenger. I mean, look at that. His artwork is incredible, like, especially with Skull. And I really do like Skulls, as you've probably gathered on my arm and stuff like that. But it's just incredible. You've got the Grim Reaper here. I absolutely love Grim Reapers with a scythe. You know, and I made it even better because like the gatefold there, it's even cooler. I mean, just that just doesn't that not scream by me to you when you look at it. And that is like this whole video is based on really really cool artwork. He did the latest uh, Revolting. I think this is their latest one. I can't remember. Another Roger Johnson band. But just look at that detail in there. Absolutely incredible. And another one that was surprised it was him, but when I looked at it closely, it's very obvious, it was the latest Crypt Crawler album. And I love this cover as well. This is another one that instantly screamed, yep, I'm all in. Absolutely incredible. Another Grim Reaper there, controlling all these undead guys with roots coming out of his arms. It's just insane the amount of detail. And you can just sit there and stare at it for hours. 
Really, really, really cool. So yeah, Juanjo Castanlano from Spain. Legend. All right, this next one is a heavy hitter in the like metal, hard rock art scene. The Wes Visconti from the USA has done tons and tons of bands. Like he's gone from Black Sabbath to Slayer, ACDC. He's done a lot. And when I was going through my collection, I didn't realise a lot of these that I have were by him. I mean, the latest from Hoodus Menace, everyone likes his cover. And you can see this kind of textured painting with a certain style to it. And as I show you these next ones, they all look very similar. And then you'll realise, oh, they're all by the same guy. So where's again, just the colours, they're so vibrant. You study the smoke with the kind of undead people coming out of the skull bell with the Grim Reaper ringing it or the Hooded Menace, should we say. A really, really cool album cover. And the latest from Hyper Dontia as well, he, he did. Again, I had I liked the band and I hadn't heard a note of this album. I pre-ordered it based off of this cover. Loved it, absolutely love it. Like, kind of reminded me of the film The Thing, that creature there. Really, really cool. And again, colours are vibrant, they punch, they hit. You can see every little detail as you study that. I mean, the logo of the band you might not be able to read, but you certainly know it's a death metal album cover just by looking at that. And he's done stuff for like Legends Autopsy with their live album. That's another one of his, as you can see. Sort of similar theme with that skull from the first uh, Hood of Menace album I just showed. But yeah, absolutely incredible. I absolutely love it. This is their live in uh, Chicago album they did in 2020, I think, or early 2021. No, 2020. Really, really, really cool. I don't think there's any more artwork by him in here. I think that's just all collage stuff. But that cover there was amazing. But he's also not just done death metal, obviously. He does thrash metal, creator. Everyone loves creator. Again, Phantom of Antichrist. Any reason I bought this album is based off the cover. You know, I absolutely love that cover. Oh, I like me some creator. And not the melodic -y kind of stuff. I like the older stuff. But this was a good album. And that cover was really, really cool. Probably better than the actual album itself, I would say. But yeah, absolutely amazing. But you know, they all look very similar, but then this one, totally different, I didn't realise it was his. And that is the one by Cattle Decapitation. And if you see there, you've got that kind of weird looking primate creature, dead on the beach, with loads of waste, like, you know. It's just crazy, absolutely crazy cover. And it's a crazy band, to be fair. I mean, an American death metal band, but they they go into all sorts of different styles, but they're very much pro-planet Earth. And their album artwork kind of depicts that, you can see with all the the human waste coming out and polluting the planet, that kind of vibe, you know, very, very clever. And the poster I've got for that is absolutely ginormous, that sits on my wall over there. And it does freak the kids out because it looks so realistic when they look at it. So yeah, totally different style to the other covers, but again, he's, he's known for doing a lot of different stuff. So he's very much the guy for Metal Blade, I believe, as well, you know, a lot of his covers are done by him. So yeah, where's Descanto? Go check him out. Right, next we're going to Holland, and this is a guy who's to, well, fairly unknown, I would imagine, to a lot of people, but I really, really dig his artwork, and some of his covers are fantastic, and these two albums I've got here kind of illustrate his style perfectly. The guy is called Marold van Hasteren, hopefully I pronounced that right, and he is known for these kind of weird, like, alien-like kind of creatures. He did the Mortress album cover, it's kind of got this, like, weird, like, thing-like creature growing out, and then if you open up the gatefold... You can kind of see it spreading across there. But yeah, really, really, really cool. And uh, when I was looking up his artwork, I didn't realise I also had another one of his, which I'm quite a big fan of. And that is the band Necrop, with their latest. This is, again, instantly drew me in, just by how weird it is. They've got these guys skinning themselves and kind of hanging it over the cover. But when you open it up, you can see they're kind of leaving it open to a big pit and just kind of ripping their skin off with scythes and just chucking it into this big unknown abyss down below and then when you open up the gatefold you've got a really cool like human head there it's very different from the other covers I've shown kind of a similar style when you compare the two and I really really like that so yeah go check him out really really cool and lastly on my list is a dude from the US called Brad Moore who does some really really cool kind of sci-fi style artwork and it's probably a band or oh, an artist you'll know a lot of bands covers from so he's done Gatekeepers Deserted and you can see this kind of weird sci-fi element to it and he, as you see his other covers as I show you them they're very bright very colourful very 
intense. You can stare at them for absolutely ages and you're always picking out nice little things that you didn't even know were in the cover. Really, really cool. Very, very different to the normal kind of death metal stereotype because you would never guess only by the logo, I guess. This is even a death metal band, judging by that cover. Well, they all have a sci-fi element to them, and this one as well, Tomb Mold, that he did. Very similar theme again, very bright, very colourful. You can't even read the logo there, but it does say Tomb Mold. But again, if you study the kind of creatures that he draws, they're just weird. It reminded me a lot of Halo when you um, discover that um, kind of plague mid through the game, the Flood. It had that vibe when I look at these covers of his especially. And he also did the latest Future Tomb EP. Again, similar style, but more... Didn't think so much sci-fi related this one. This was more like in a crypt. But again, very bright, very colourful. And again, similar sort of style. But he's probably mostly known for this album cover at the moment because it is very, very popular. And... Uh, I love it, very very cool, and that is the latest one from Worm that he did. Again, very cool artwork, you know, I fucking love this. Like, you study it, you further away you kind of see it's just like a plant, and then you study it more and more and more, and you kind of pick out little details you wouldn't have noticed. And this came with a ginormous poster which is above my head with his artwork, and it's just incredible. Really, really cool artist. And again, it's another one where you kind of see it and you think, yep, I'm all in on that, you know take my money, I'll have that. And then it might be a shit album, but you're happy that you have the cover because you can just stare at that instead. So yeah, Brad Moore, brilliant artist. So yeah, that is my 10 favorite metal artists from my collection. I hope you enjoyed the video. A bit different from everyone else's hopefully, and uh, you know, something that uh, you, know, you can take something from and then go look for your collection and see if you've got anything by these guys. Or you know, you might have some more artists, recommend them below that you think are well worth a mention. So I say cheers to everyone, 110% beer. So if I'm not wanked by the end of this, I don't know what will. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Please check out other content here, here and here. And I will speak to you guys in the comments section. Cheers.